revved up for a powerful transmission. Obviously, the news just gets more intense. Joe Beggs will be joining us from Fox Lake, Illinois, for an update. And he's going to be coming back home on one of the latest police officers uh, killed. And we have a Austin attorney who's really at the center of both sides with the situation, with the crisis, with police brutality, but also the crisis of police being executed all over the country. He'll be joining us in studio to look at the race war that I can really officially say has been artificially started in this country and is truly despicable. We're going to get into the latest on Donald Trump, the latest on Hillary, the latest on the giant immigrant waves slamming into every Western country. It is an intensifying globalist takeover. And we're going to open the phones up early in the first hour. The toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. Again, I am your host, Alex Jones. Here's John Bounds' report on Obama's al-Qaeda buddies. ISIS has threatened yet another document of human history. In war, there are essentially three ways that historic monuments are destroyed, either in a hail of gunfire as it's exchanged by warring soldiers or demolished by bombs dropped from the air, or more recently, by a Frankenstein monster of religious zealots arrogantly expressing their domination of a captured area and destruction of idols. Hundreds of casualties in air raids on Syrian market and the media is demonizing the Syrian government, saying, how dare they? It looks like a bunch of civilians got killed because Al-Qaeda, ISIS, as they always do, base their head base in the city they've taken over. This is admitted in the middle of the market because there's buildings within the market. Syria has now turned the tide against the rebels two years ago. Now they've had the tide turned against them. The rebels hold more than 60% of the country. They're taking major towns and cities every week. Russia is basically starting to withdraw support from Syria. It looks like it's going to fall to Al-Qaeda. And they are going to murder every Christian and Jew they get their hands on. And then you'll hear our media go, gee, Syria's so failed. They're killing everyone. It's so sad. Just like Libya. Recently, Syrian scholar Khalid al-Assad was beheaded by ISIS militants as a stark message to President Bashir al-Assad as ISIS wages its United Nations and CIA-backed horror across the Middle East into the jowls of Damascus. The legendary 82-year-old scholar had been interrogated for a month over the location of treasures from Palmyra. His beheaded and mutilated corpse was hung from one of the Roman-era column ruins in the ancient Syrian city. With him dissipates decades of world history and irreplaceable relics that stood for thousands of years. Before the destruction of Palmyra, the ancient Assyrian city of Nimrod, the site believed to have been where the Tower of Babel was built, was destroyed in March. Secretary of State John Kerry said he was disturbed by the destruction in Nimrod. Yet none of this would have happened without Kerry's hidden hand allowing the ISIS monster to grow on his watch. Mark Altawil, professor of archaeology at University College of London, said, I would describe Nimrod as one of the really unique archaeological sites in the entire ancient Near East. Nimrod is the capital of the first empire in this long series of empires that have profound significance in the way this region develops and ultimately how it affects our own society. In March of 2015, ISIS ravaged Iraq's antiquities, destroying the ancient royal city of Sargon and Khorzabad, northeast of Mosul. The ancient city of Hatra and the Mosul Museum, where many of the Assyrian artifacts were housed, was destroyed. The multi-million dollar Mosul library that housed thousands of ancient books and manuscripts were looted and used for firewood, and Jonah's tomb was blown up. Jonah's story being one that is spread among all faiths. Meanwhile, the United Nations stands by and wrings its hands, deeming the destruction a war crime, refusing to own up to any of the blame while supporting the New World Order in its bid for global dominance, bursting with the demons of the United States and United Nations supported obliteration of human history. John Bounds for Infinite. All right, we'll be back. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen, on this Thursday, the third day of September, 2015. We'll be live tomorrow with the Friday transmission. We'll be live Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. as well. Uh, and I'm going to tape and also put together a best-of show that'll be a mix of new reports and also some of our best-ofs 
uh, coming up on Monday over the holiday long weekend. And of course, there's InfoWars Nightly News, 4 to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, that you'll be able to tune into. The Sunday broadcast, 4 to 6. The Nightly News, of course, 7 o'clock weeknights. I am just so incredibly frustrated and outraged by the clear, naked, open promotion of racial division and race war in this country and the shocking rhetoric of Louis Farrakhan and other organizations that if any other organization or group was saying it, you would have investigations, you would have indictments. But because we have a Justice Department and a White House and then George Soros <clears throat> above that, quarterbacking the operation, it is seen as acceptable by the minions in the government who then won't respond or do anything about the promotion of what is clearly terrorism in this country, going out and shooting and killing and executing people. And regardless of what you think about some of the police out there, they have a right to a judge, they have a right to a jury, they have a right to due process. And I know the argument is some of these judges and juries and grand juries are corrupt and cops get away with a lot. And in some jurisdictions, that's certainly true. In some jurisdictions, the good cops get targeted. All I know is there is an organized, planned program to start a civil war in this country ignited by race war right at the time that the globalist social engineers are causing conflicts all over the planet. And they'll take any division they can, exacerbate it to create divide and conquer. They'll come in and hype Crip versus blood to get blacks killing each other. And now look where that is today. <coughs> so it's a very serious situation. And I know that the audience of this broadcast is fully aware of that. I know that the audience of this radio show slash TV show understands that, but we have to get that information out to everyone else in the country and the world. And we have tens of millions of regular listeners. We've probably got upwards of 10 million hardcore listeners and fans of Liberty that tune in each and every week. We've got four or five million people. We have all the metrics that tune in every day. We have over 10 million people that kind of passively come through the show and the different platforms of the broadcast every week. And those are the real people we're trying to shake out of their doldrums, shake out of their trance, to realize the big picture and understand the epic historical developments that are taking place right now. When they're bold enough to start renaming mountains and the president is operating as a dictator, shutting down power plants, opening borders, funding ISIS, when they're bold enough to be selling body parts of babies and whole babies, when they're bold enough to be putting fluoride in the water, known to lower IQ and cause brain damage and bone cancer, when they're bold enough, we have new footage out of Mexico of girls convulsing and collapsing and writhing after they're given the Gardasil shot. That video is up on Infowars.com. And this is the response that's happened in other parts of the world. They push it as trendy, cool, wonderful from Australia to the United States. And a good minority of the girls that take it have convulsions within an hour of taking it. A smaller minority die. Others have autoimmune disorders. Others get Guillain-Barre, narcolepsy. It is admittedly a super dangerous vaccine that has been banned in many countries. And they're forcing every girl in Mexico, every school-age girl to take it. They do it at the school, and they give it to them in the morning. And by lunchtime, their infirmary is full of girls writhing around, having convulsions, blood coming out of their noses. And they can just do this and just push it as establishment and get away with it. Just like uh, yesterday in the fourth hour, we re-aired a David Knight interview from the Nightly News a few months ago with a whistleblower nurse. She sent us her ID. She sent us all her proof. 
from the major hospital that she's a senior nurse at. Of course, we didn't show all that on air. Another whistleblower report, the woman did use her name, and they said, we run the preemie departments. They can be six months, seven months. They could even be doing well for a week. We get the order, inoculate them all, and we get ready to get respirators, defibrillators. We get ready to fight for their lives. We hold their hands. We give them the vaccines, and the poor little things start convulsing, and they start losing them. This is the modern firing squads. And it's done hidden in plain view. And they don't care if you're an FBI agent's baby girl. They don't care if you're an auto mechanic's baby boy. They don't care if you're Hispanic. They don't care if you're black. They don't care if you're white. They don't care if you're an immigrant from Russia or Mexico. The new world order wants to inject you and just normalize all the death, all the mental illness, all the brain damage, all the neurological disorders, all the autism, all the autoimmune disorders, and just normalize that suddenly there's all these sick people everywhere. And we had one in 25,000 with autism 30 years ago, and now it's one in 58. CDC's own numbers. They estimate one in 10, then one in three. One in 10 by 2025. One in three by 2030. Just type it in. You can pull it up yourself. And it'll be normal just to don't be against everybody that's in wheelchairs and can't talk. Why are you being hateful of the crippled people? Don't use the word crippled. Be politically correct. Use the term handicap. See, it's all about don't use the word crippled, but don't care why everybody is crippled. See how they play these games? Oh, we don't sell the embryonic tissue of babies in the first three weeks. We just sell the fetal tissue up to nine months. It's all semantical games, all little jokes, all little scams, all so funny. Gaming all the unconscious TV heads. They're like little children. I walk around and see the general public. They're like little kids. Their eyes are just kind of open like, in a trance state, ooh, just, just putting on fronts of how they're tough, how they're cool, how they're smart, how they've got money. All of it's just like reef with bright colors showing off to each other. Well, I'm not a stupid reef fish. I'm not a parrot either to repeat things. I can see clearly what's happening to us, and it's nightmare. It's just crazy town. And people don't even know they're living in the beginning of a total dystopia. They have no idea. It's all scientifically planned. You know, I, I've looked at it closely. It's, it's very alien, and I have no proof of aliens. I don't get into UFOs. But the more I research this and look at it, this is not of this world, man. I'm a Christian. It's the devil. I just, I, that's, what, that's all I can handle. It's the devil. Every culture said there's this evil force that gets people to do bad things and that there's a master design behind it that's beyond humans. And I'm telling you, I've looked at this and it's so sophisticated and the formula is so sickening that I want to believe it's, it's an entity, a spirit, and not my fellow humans. But the truth is, you get seven and a half billion people, there's a large... group of people in this world that'll sell their mama out for a stick of bubble gum. And then there are very small groups of people that have super high IQs and are almost like Asperger's idiot savants when it comes to manipulating people. And they're cold-blooded and they have a real hunger for death. A real hunger for enslavement. And just other people don't see it. You read history, you see it, but I don't even need to read history. I have. I can tune into their BS. And I, it's just like living with these people and seeing, and they're, they're smirking, they're laughing, they're gang signs, they're, they're, they're Illuminati garbage. Makes me sick. I mean, these people are evil. Evil, evil, evil. I'm going to come back, get into our top stories, and then I'm going to open the phones up when we start the bottom of the hour segment. I'm going to go to your calls very, very soon. Stay with us. Joe Biggs is going to pop in for about five minutes at the start of the next segment. And then we'll go to your phone calls. He ran around all night with the police searching in fields, you name it, uh, for whoever shot the police officer. Uh, the three men, one uh, black man, two white men. 
uh, there 